I want to put my knee on his neck. If anything, I probably would have set him up against the car. So my thing is, and a question that I actually have for you as well is, if I am in handcuffs and I'm doing all this moving because you are hurting me and I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying, like move in certain directions, do you feel that it was okay for that officer to actually like just hold his, just hold his, his knee in this dude's neck no. for the simple fact of he's calling, he can't breathe and he still continue to do that. That's, I think that's where most of the people is trying to figure out, okay, why this wasn't charged with first degree murder and they charged it first at third degree. They don't have, I figure they have, it's, the video spoke for itself for a jury to just say third degree at first. Well, I was watching um, the guy that was handling that the, the case was given to, and he was saying that you, they had to charge him with third degree murder for something, and then it once they got it to second degree, it was like a, a it, things lead up for you to charge them with the degree of whatever it is. So, it, like if they assaulted him, mm -hmm. so being that they assaulted him, that probably more was the, like the intent for him to be killed, I guess that was the words to say for them to even charge him with second degree. But I don't think that they can charge him charge him with first degree murder. It's, it's something with the laws. Like, the laws are really messed up in different different cities or different uh, states. To me personally, I think each and every last one of them should be charged with first degree murder. If, if you ask me, I feel that way. And the reason that I do feel that way is because each and every last one of y'all was involved with this. Exactly. This man was actually saying he cannot breathe, but you continue to have your knee in this man's neck. You didn't know if he had asthma. You didn't know what the only thing y'all were worrying about is was a counterfeit twenty dollar bill. And I just don't feel like that was enough force that y'all needed to do for this person. I like, watched the video just, today. Um, there was an Asian. It was a white girl and there was a black guy standing on the curb, curb as they were. And he, the, I watched the interview, and the young man said that he could not see past two tile, which is the Asian guy that was standing there overseeing everything. He said he could not see on the other side of the car. He said all that he could see was the uh, Chauvin dude and um, George. And he said that um, he just, he could see that the man wasn't breathing and they were screaming out to him like, you know, can y'all help him? He not breathing, y'all at least check the man's pulse. And they kept saying, you know, like, you know, move back, step back, you can't interfere, you can't interfere. So he was saying that when they came up like what he walked up into he was like the guy had no remorse he was like there was it, it was malicious intent he was like he meant to do this he was like he had like death in his eyes like he meant to kill this man and i pray you i hope that he gets to testify against them him and that girl because mm -hmm. they were out there pleading for that man life and it wasn't you can't get involved in police activity because that's a charge for you absolutely and i do agree and i agree exactly with that because i wanted to speak on that as well i know a lot of people was like okay well if they're sitting there recording this why they didn't do nothing about it first of all i feel like it wasn't it, it will be a charge for you trying to help somebody especially if they are in the possession of a cop handling what they're supposed to be doing and you interfere with that they can charge you with something they am can, i correct they can charge okay. you they can charge you for interfering with whatever is going on. Yeah, so I don't think that... It was nothing that people could it do. It was nothing they could right. It, it was, was nothing, nothing that, that people could, could do. do. Um, it, it, most that they could do for their conscience was at least trying to get them to, you know, uh, try something else. But one of the officers that were on him said that um, he, uh, the guy asked him. I just feel like this right here... If, the, if that young lady video was not recorded, I think this was something that would have been slept under the rug because I feel like this not happened, not just this time. It was just that we had camera phones that was recording this situation during this time. Years before, it had always probably been things going on in the world like this, but have been swept under the rug. But nobody rug even thought about it. If you, if you think about it, the man knew that he was being recorded. He looked right up at the camera and still didn't let up. He worked with this man somewhere before for years. So whatever it was, he had a vendetta. And we can take it back a little bit more than that. The guy who called the police, the A-Rap guy, 
the name of that store is the Golden Cup. And I'm saying this, I, it might sound bad, I don't care. I hope the Golden Cup never opens up again. I hope they never get no business. I hope that nobody is ever able to enter into that property ever again in life. Because had that boy not called the police on that man, that man would still be living. But I mean, what? I, that's how I you, feel. If you had a business, somebody tried to come get over you, call the police. The, the bill wasn't fake, though. It wasn't fake. That's what they so called said it was. That's what the report said. And he See said, how the counterfeit And 20. he said now he wish he didn't call the police on the police. Right. That's going to haunt that boy for the rest of his life. Absolutely. Yeah. That's going to haunt that boy for the rest of his life. And I hope that the Golden Cup, <coughs> excuse me, y'all, don't never open back up. Well, they probably didn't burn it down. But they ain't burning down. If he already left the store and everything, why would you still call the cops? Why would you follow after him? Then you get the police to follow after him, and then when he get out the because car, let's he, take it back though. Car, did y'all, did the people, him. did y'all see when the ambulance came to pick George Floyd up? We y'all know the ambulance to wear bulletproof vests. And have no mean. equipment. They didn't have any equipment with them at all. I've never they seen got the, they I have jumped, in the Those like the police don't jumped out. Years. When the, when the paramedics that. arrive and you have somebody that's down, they supposed to apply CPR right then and there. Absolutely. They did not do that. They put Absolutely. that man directly on that gurney, picked him up, put him directly on that gurney, put him in that daggum thing, and wheeled him off and say he died at the hospital when we know he died in the street. Yeah. Right. And they Absolutely. felt his forehead. They just felt his forehead, and then they picked him up. That was not. Those was not the EMTs. Those were not paramedics. But I, do, I, do, I do know if 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 the paramedics like the hospital situation, they will get the get the body and get out of there for their safety. But and they do it in the hospital. But they never che- they never had any equipment. They only had the gurney when they came out. They only had a the gurney. They didn't never have any right. Instead of you coming have. on the scene trying they to figure out what's going on, people. if you see somebody down on the ground. First thing you should do is come straight off the EMT truck they and run apply. straight no to CPR, this man. They didn't apply like to see that. and check pulses. Like I have worked in the healthcare for 17 years and I'll be damned if I know for sure none of these Carolina Medical Center EMTs worked in the ED right along with you. Right with me. They come in they come on the in gurney doing CPR, CPR on these people. So Absolutely. I don't understand that. I, I, I cannot write and my big mind shout out to Miss Tiffany. Miss Tiffany, if anybody know her, she's one of the greatest EMTs in Charlotte, North Carolina, working at Carolina's Medical Center. And when I tell you this lady completely, I have seen her do compressions on people and have brought people back to life. So they're not going to tell me when they got there, they're going to just take out a stretcher and put him on. No, Y'all did not perform man. the proper they duty to no, take care of the EMTs are first responders. When you're a first responder, you try to resuscitate right then and there before you even leave the scene. Even if they are dead, you still resuscitate. They did Absolutely. not do that. It is so many things about this shit. Y'all, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I think back, Michael Brown, Sandra Bland, uh, Sean Bell, Man, it's a lot. Uh, Phil uh, Castro it's a lot. from uh, uh, Baltimore, Trayvon Martin. It, it, the list okay. just goes on and on and on and on and on. But not one of those cases have they have gone in debt and everybody got off on them cases mm-hmm. except these right here. Absolutely. So the fact that we all got out here and protested and made a change and I think like I said that's what Obama was saying he was proud of us for standing up for something that, really that makes a us. difference Absolutely. that makes a difference that makes a difference I'm, I'm proud of everybody Absolutely. I hope everybody's still staying COVID safe because ain't nobody said a damn thing about COVID-19 because they sure been out here at these malls shopping in the malls with no masks on and I'm telling y'all y'all think it cannot happen to no one that you're near or y'all think it can't happen to you I read George Floyd's you. autopsy report today he had the COVID nineteen. So they say they will say anything. It was to in the autopsy report. report. It right. was in the autopsy report. But that's report. not how he died. So I that's don't know. not how he died. And people, we did but not people say were that. Trying to say that. That's though. not how that's he not died. How he died. We he just died of asphyxiation. Absolutely. That's not how he died. Not how he died. So that is not how he died. But he had the COVID nineteen. That, that is not how. So that, how I, he died. I'm sure two Tutile. Chauvin and the other two dudes. Y'all probably got the COVID nineteen too. So that's what the hell y'all get. And one more thing I want Bastards. to speak about. They also, the day was George um, Floyd's funeral, correct? Today was. Today was. And also, the gentleman that killed the guy that was jogging, they show, it was in court today. They court appearance was today. Mm-hmm. So, so we're going to look that up. We're going to look that up we'll and we're going to that for week. you next week. We'll talk about that next, next week. week. Maybe next week we'll get uh, some of you guys to 
come in on our live and we can get uh, you all's feelings. I appreciate um, our viewers tonight that came and, Absolutely. and I gave give us a little bit of feedback because we definitely needed that. Um, you know, we don't be understanding the tactics of the damn police because don't nobody like 12. So, you know, when we can get the other side's <laughs> feedback to give us a little better understanding, that's what we be looking for. Absolutely. So um, I appreciate our viewer coming in tonight just to giving us that little feedback so and we thank can you so much understand a little really better of how, it. you know, certain things go. But, um, yeah, y'all, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I am still feel some kind of way about that. This is going to be, this going to be on the, this going to really be on the map forever, y'all. Like, this is really going down in history. I know y'all heard Trina call them folks animals that was protesting, and everybody been eating her ass up. <laughs> I can't wait to Monday. Big shout outs to Kaya because I know Kaya is about to get ready and go in. Charlotte, 5,000 of us showed up to protest. That was real big for the city. That was real big for the Queen City. Thank y'all so much for that. Now, CMPD, y'all know y'all wrong as hell for firing on violins like that. Y'all fired her ass up with that ticket. That's not funny. Y'all know y'all wrong as hell for firing the mayor up like that. Y'all wrong as hell for firing y'all damn mayor up like that. Y'all just didn't even give a damn. The mayor came out there to protest. Y'all ain't give a shit. That's Chief Kirk Putney is. came out there to protest. Y'all just didn't give a damn. That was no, messed up. Yeah. That well, was I want to definitely up. give some shout outs to the people that actually joined in, which I tell you every single week we appreciate y'all. Thank everybody in. for tuning in. Um, I want to give a shout out to Miss Yolanda Weathers. I see Mr. Patrick in here. I see Mr. Rusty in here. I see Mr. Van Jones. Jerry Covington, Van thank Jones you so from, much. Uh, no, that's my cousin. Oh, dang. I thought that was the yeah. ball head dude with the glass. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I got Aretha F um, Foster that <laughs> yeah, tuned in. Donald I'm sorry. Dunlap, thank you. Mr. Man Gibson for tuning in. Nikhil Williams. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you so in. much for tuning in as well. Miss Latoya Simpson, Virginia Franklin. We really do appreciate y'all and thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for tuning in to Talk That Talk every Thursday at 9.30. Thank y'all so much. Bye, y'all. Peace.